Hello, my name is Dr. Peter Fritsch. I'm a curator and chair in the Department of Botany at the California Academy of Sciences. And uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today about an interesting discovery I and colleagues made um, while we were in uh, Brazil on a field expedition um, over 10 years ago now. And the, the process of discovery has, has occurred over the course of, of the following 10 10 years so that we just published this paper uh, just this year. We found a plant that was in a, a snapdragon family, and but it had sort of characteristic features of, of things that looked like more like carnivorous plants in those families. Well, it turns out it really does belong to the snapdragon family, but it turns out also that it's carnivorous. And that's really surprising because the snapdragon family has never known any plants, a very large family of plants, um, to have a, a plant that's carnivorous. The thing about this plant is that the carnivory is kind of hidden from view because uh, the leaves uh, that capture the little organisms that uh, it uses for nutrient supplements occur underneath the soil. And so there was, it was not easily observable. The leaves are very, very small. This is, this is one whole plant right here. Of, of Philcoxia. This is Philcoxia minensis from, from Brazil. And this, uh, this is what we call the inflorescence from here all the way up to that. It has the flowers on it. So this is a stalk with flowers. It's not stem, it's just a stalk for the, for the flowers and the fruits, where the flowers and the fruits occur. And this, the, the stem part is this part right here, down here. And then this down here is the root. It's got a real long taproot so it can can anchor itself into this real loose kind of white sand soil uh, in the Cejado vegetation where it occurs. This. And the strangest thing about the plant, when we first saw the plant, we, uh, we noticed right away how these, there, there, there were hardly any, it looked like there were no leaves on it, but then when you look closely, you see these little green round things right there? Those are the leaf blades. They're real small, they're like one or two millimeters across. They're real small in comparison to the rest of the plant. The plant is not that big to begin with, but the leaves are really small. And they're attached by these long threads to the, the stem area. And so it's a very, very strange plant. Uh, just the way it looks is very odd that way. This is, this is a kind of a dry dead leaf, and you can see the, what I want to show on this a lot better than with a, with a young green leaf. If you look closely, you can see these brown threads on this leaf. And these brown threads actually are nematode worms. And uh, that's what it see appears to be digesting, is nematode worms. Yeah, so these leaves, they sit right under the surface of the soil. So that, that when the, uh, the leaf is growing, it's completely underneath. And then, and then just when it starts to open, it seems like it it, uh, it opens up to form this, it's got this round you know, disc shape and we don't know if the leaves have, have an attractant that you know, attracts the nematode worms to the leaves, if there's some sort of chemical signal, no one's tested for that yet, but uh, most likely it's probably a passive system where the, where the nematodes are wiggling through the soil and the water. Uh, between the sand grains, and they find themselves you know, trapped by the by the uh, sticky glands on the leaf. And so, to find this, to discover this this carnivorous plant in a in a family that's not known for carnivory, su is suggests that there might be other um, carnivorous plants out there that we just haven't seen yet. We haven't we haven't done the kind of the proper analyses and tests and, and observations to know whether or not other plants that don't seem to be carnivorous really might be.